All right, little change of pace today. I really wanted to get out fishing, especially on the kayak, and the ocean is super rough today. I mean, it's like, uh, we wouldn't even consider going out in a kayak. So anyways, we're out here, fresh water. Gonna be doing some trout fishing today. And I feel like this is kind of what this kayak was built for. I know that I use this kayak probably like 95% of the time out in the ocean, maybe even more than that. And it works great out in the ocean. But I feel like in a freshwater lake, kind of doing the kind of fishing we're gonna do today is where this kayak really, really excels. It's really cold this morning. I got my ski jacket. I got my hand warmers in my pockets here. We're gonna try to stay warm today. And we're gonna try to catch some trout. And we're gonna be using all artificial today. So let me get that all set up. And then uh, we'll get to fishing. Should be a fun day. Kind of a nice, relaxing, but hopefully exciting trout fishing day. All right, so this is my favorite trout lure, one of my favorites at least, this little Fire Tiger Rapala. I think this is a J, it's either J7 or a J5, but anyway, it's a little jointed thing. Has some good action in the water, and especially when the water's a little cloudy like it is right now, I feel like this lure kind of gives off a little more shine. It's a little brighter, stands out a little more, and I think he's stock trout really. Don't care too much about the natural presentation. Honestly, they're just looking for anything they can find that they can eat, so. I'm gonna put this one in, and then on this side, I'm gonna put another little um, Paula or jerk bait on this one. But yeah, this is the one I have confidence in. I feel like if I get hit, this is gonna be the one that gets hit first. In California, you can use two rods when you're trout fishing, but you do need an extra little, it's called a second rod validation stand. So it's another little thing that you need to get in addition to your normal fishing license. But definitely recommend it. I feel like, you know, obviously, if you have more rods in the water, you got a better chance of hooking up, and it's only, I wanna say it's like, oh, I just saw one jump right in front of me. Saw the whole thing come out of the water. I think it's only like $15, $17, dollars something like that. So definitely worth it. Actually, while we're speaking of licenses, I actually just bought my licenses for 2023. So friendly reminder, you gotta do that as well. So while you're at it, maybe think about getting that second rod validation if you're gonna do some trout fishing. Alright, we're set up, we're officially fishing. And I just saw one jump right in front of me. Oh, I also forgot to mention, we're gonna be meeting up with the Trout King. I feel like, I don't know what it is, but he just loves fishing for stock trout, and that's Nick Fish. I've seen him in plenty of my videos. It's been a while since we did a trout fishing video, but he actually takes clients out here. So if you're interested in doing some trout kayak fishing, um, and you don't have a kayak, or maybe you just never done trout fishing before, definitely hit him up. He's a guide. He does a lot of stuff out in the salt water, but he also does uh, trips out here in the fresh water as well. So anyways, hit him up if you're interested. But today, I'm gonna show them how it's done. At least that's the plan. There's a fish. There's a fish. That was a fish. Oh, it's cool. That's a fish, though. Right as I was coming out of that turn. Fish just slammed it. All right, that didn't take long at all. That was probably, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes into trolling. Once I came out of that turn, I was just turning along this little bank here, and then boom, that one just crushed it. I told you I had it. I had the confidence in this fire tiger. Down. Oh, oh, oh. There he goes. I feel like I get this question every time. Probably because most of my fishing is done out in the ocean. Uh, people are always wondering why my drag is so loose. And for trout fishing, we're using super light line. I mean, it's like a fraction of what we typically use out in the ocean. So that's why you can see not much pressure on the fish to take line out, but that's what you have to do with this light, light line. If you put any more pressure on the fish, that leader will just snap. Not a bad fish, probably, I don't know, three or four pounder maybe? Uh, 
I don't know, I think that's a little bit more. That's probably like four or five pounds. I would guess. Really staying down. Every time I get him next to the pack, it's just kind of poking down. Come on up. Got him. Yeah, I think that's probably close to five pounds actually. All right, look at that. Nice stocked trout. Kind of short, kind of stocky, which is pretty much how a lot of these trout are. They're kind of fed to get as fat as possible because they're sold by the pound. So um, anyways, that's kind of expected. But yeah, that's a nice one on that fire tiger. Not too bad, but yeah, let's see if we can get another one. So because that fish came as I was kind of coming out of that turn, when you're coming out of a turn, that lure is going to be going a little bit slower than it was normally when you're just going on a straight troll. So, so we're going to take that little bit of knowledge and we're going to try to use it. So we're going to troll a little bit slower, not a lot, but a little bit slower than we were at the beginning. So on this rod I have, I think it's 15 pound test braided line main line. And then I have about a maybe three foot liter of six pound fluorocarbon. You don't need to go super light with these uh, stock trout. But I do like to go somewhat light anytime you're trout fishing. Even with the stock trout. Because I feel like it gives you a little bit better chance. And then yeah, just giving it a nice little cast out, probably maybe 100 feet back. Boom. One for two on getting the bites on camera. So that's pretty good. Usually, for whatever reason, the fish or the camera that or the rod that I'm pointing. Oh, it just came off. Oh, it came off right there. I think it's bite seems a little bit spotty. Nick and his client, they got, I think they caught three or they landed three. We had a couple of missed strikes. And I've now had one short strike or one that came off and one that I landed. So. Definitely not a wide open bite for either of us, but there's some fish here. that I can't even like I'm just not able to bring him in I think we got to slow it down I saw it splash from a ways away and it looked like a good one so hopefully we can keep this one pinned definitely the one that we lost was a lot smaller than this one so I'm trying to circle around him a little bit He's staying down though he was also booking it right at the beginning. I'm sure he used quite a bit of energy with that run. Oh, oh, no. oh no, oh no, oh no. All right, this guy, he's all over the place. Oh, oh, oh. Really don't want him to waste, to use all the energy right next to it, but we want him to waste it all out there. Oh, it's a good, good sex fish. Good size fish for sure. Come on. Come on. Well, Dad. What's up, man? Hold up one sec. I gotta I'll call you back. Alright, we'll discuss that here. Good day. Alright, later. Sorry, I was on the phone there. I was literally on hold on the phone with my friend, so shout out to him, he doesn't know it, but he brought me some good luck 
while I was waiting for him to get back on the phone. He's a relatively strong fish for stock fish, usually not that strong, but this one got some energy for sure. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Come on in. Ah, got, him. got him! All right, look at those fish right there. Twins, almost identical in length. A little bit different. The first one's a little bit stockier. That's this one on the on my right side, your left side. This one's a little bit longer and skinnier. But a couple of nice fish, probably both around five pounds. But yeah, it was getting a little tough. I didn't get a bite for maybe two hours. And then I had that one that you saw that popped off. That was definitely a smaller fish. I want to say it was probably like, you know, one pound, maybe even less. And then just kept trolling around, kept trolling around, came right over here, similar area to where I hooked the first one. And bang, that's where that one hit. That one took off like a ton of bricks and then it was on the surface splashing around. That was a good fight. But yeah, you could tell he was kind of splashing around, wrapping up in that line, because you can see right there, it's like all kind of kinked up. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut that and retie just because we're using such light line, any little compromise in the line, not a good thing. So when I'm trolling, especially these plugs on the kayak, I'm not necessarily looking for a certain speed, I'm more looking at the action of the lure. And with these plugs, because that rapala is kind of swimming in the water, I can tell the action based on the tip of the rod. Both of my rod tips are just kind of vibrating on each side. So I can really tell the action very, very easily, especially with this braided line, because the braided line has very minimal stretch. I actually probably want to change this setup to braided main line as well. But anyways, if something were to go wrong, like on the lure, maybe the, you know, the hook gets caught on the line and it gets kind of wrapped up so it's not swimming properly, I could really tell the difference on, on these setups. So, for example, if I were to come across a piece of grass and it gets hung up on that lure, the line will, or the rod tip will stop vibrating and then I'll know something's up, I'll have to bring it up and check it, but uh, yeah, very easy, very simple, and very convenient that way. Oh, oh another rod, another rod, nailed it. I was holding the rod this time. That one just nailed it. You know, I'm gonna keep going and see if I can double up on another rod. That one just nailed it. I was holding the rod this time and I just felt him grab it. I actually set the hook a little bit. So this is actually a kokanee rod. It's super long, super flexible. I really like it for trout as well. It really absorbs all those head shakes. It's pretty important, especially when we're using light line, small hooks. We are lucky here in the Bay Area. I always rag on the stock trout, but we're lucky in the Bay Area. They really stock them rather large. We'll say that. Oh no. Get away from the motor. Oh. oh. Sorry, all these fish are like the same size. Uh, you really T bone that lure. Yeah, another five pounder. I feel like they're all the same. Yeah, this time I was holding the rod, so I really got to feel him slam it. And that was definitely fun. I want to do that again. All right, a little bit of different style jerk bait, but pretty similar nonetheless. Another nice one, put on the stringer. Look at that ridiculous stringer. Three monster. Actually, I think the last one might be a little bit bigger. 
So this is what I mean when I say this kayak is built for this. Look at this. So I can adjust the speed. So right now we're on a level three. I don't know if you guys can see the remote there or not, but anyways, we're at a level three. It tells me exactly how fast we're going, 1.5 miles per hour about. And if I want to go a little bit faster, I can bump that up. Now we're going four, it's going to bow up to like maybe 1.9, maybe two, miles, uh, about 1.9. But uh, yeah, super easy with this kayak. I mean, I'm not really doing any work. Motor's doing all the work and it can control the speed super easily. And on top of that, there's way more features that this thing has. It can, it has basically a cruise control and it also has, um, I don't know what this is called, but it, it keeps your heading. So like if I wanted to go straight in this direction, and let the motor do all the steering. I can click this button right here, boom. And then if you can see the motor, it's turning a little bit to keep me on a straight line. Same thing with this cruise control. If I wanted to keep it at 1.7, I could turn that on and boom. So now we're gonna go in this straight line at 1.7 until I tell it to stop doing that. So super convenient, very, very easy to maneuver, especially on a lake where there's no swell and no current or anything like that basically just still water this motor can really really excel so and then also in addition to this remote there's a backup so in case this runs out of battery or if i happen to drop it in the water or something i have a backup on my phone and it connects through bluetooth to the motor straight from my phone to the motor um, just in case of emergency or if this goes out for whatever reason so haven't had any issues with this guy so seems to be a very well designed kayak. There's another one. There's another one. Once again while I was holding it. I like holding it. I feel like I have more control over the setting the hook. It's obviously the most fun thing to do when you're fishing. Still got some weight to it. I don't know how small it actually is. Oh, it's not small. It's smaller, but definitely not small. Oh, we got one treble in the mouth. Got him. Oh, it came off right in the net. Another nice one. Those last three fish, I think, were all within the span of about an hour. So, looking for one more now. Complete the limit. There we go. There we go. There we go. There's another one. Oh, it just came off. Dang it. Oh, I had one. Oh, did it break? Broke off. No. no. That was a good lure. There's a fish. There's a fish. There's a fish. That's a fish. Stay on there. Stay on there. There we go. I was beginning to think that me losing my lucky lure might have cost me my chance at a limit, but I was able to get one here on my other, my other lucky lure. But it's not over yet, we still gotta land it. Coming. Uh oh. That's what I think it is. It is! <laughs> this is not the one that I lost, but it is something special. When you guys see this fish, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's gonna look a little bit different than the last one. All of the last one. Come into the net. Into the net. Nope, nope. Come on. Into the net. Alright, into the net. Nice and easy. There we go. Now, if you'll notice this fish looks a little bit different. So, this trout right here. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but you can see it's like a nice golden, kind of yellowish color, and that's not a fluke. Well, 
I guess it is kind of a fluke, but it's not, it's the way it's intended to be. And as the color might entail, this is called a lightning trout. So they stock these in the Bay Area lakes. They're, uh, I, honestly, I don't know that much about them. I just know that they look kind of different. They look kind of cool. They look very different. Kind of cool. It's like a mutation kind of thing that they've now bred and, you know, sock them on purpose. People get excited about them. Obviously, these fish would probably not last in the wild due to them being very not uh, camouflaged in with their surroundings, I guess you could say. They would be very easily spotted by birds and stuff flying over, so I don't think these fish would survive naturally, but they're kind of cool. They stock these in the Bay Area Lakes. Another type of, or I don't know if it's another separate species altogether, but basically a rainbow trout that has been dyed bright bright yellow and that right there is our fifth and final fish i want to say this is close to a 25 pound stringer not, oh man look at that honestly i'm kind of worried my stringer is gonna break yeah five monster stock trout like i said earlier i kind of feel like this is what this tag was pretty much built to do troll in these little lakes and stuff like that fish for trout and other freshwater species so i feel like i'm doing the kayak justice today. So. Look at that shot. The deck is full of stock trout. There's my lightning trout right there. And then my four other regular old monster stocked rainbows. Look at the heads on these fish, huge heads. Especially this first, this is the first one I got. Huge head, so it's like a 10 pound head on a five pound or maybe even less pound body. Kind of skinny tail, but that's kind of normal with these stock trout. A lot of them are somewhat misshapen, I guess you could say. That's gonna wrap it up for today. Fun day out here nonetheless. It was a little bit of a tough bite at first, but once we got them figured out, it was kind of almost like clockwork. So anyways, fun little change of pace today. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time.